magic of the Cybernet Space Cube, the computer enhanced podcast of the future, Transformers Slag Podcast. What's up, everybody? How we all doing this Saturday night? This is the Transformers Slag Podcast, Saturday night live stream main event. I am your host, Proto Man. I am the face that runs this place. I'm the voice you hear Monday to Friday. And it is Saturday, and uh, some lucky people on Wednesday even. I did a secret stream on Wednesday, just kind of turned on the camera, uh, wanted to talk about Mark Bright and kind of the stuff that he did in the industry, and I was kind of just going through some of my my comic books and stuff like that. So you guys got a little special live stream in the middle. I apologize for people that didn't get to see that. It was not planned. I was sorting comics, and then I was like, you know what, I'll just turn on the camera and unshaved proto man <laughs> in the middle of tire season uh got to rock out so how y'all doing again for people that are new to this my name is proto man and this is the transformer swag podcast Saturday night live stream main event and we're gonna chill out tonight we are gonna talk transformers we have some updates to some news to talk about we have some new information that's going to be happening later this week um we got that reveal that i was teasing last saturday that i felt was going to be coming out at some point um because again there's a lot of stuff that happens on the chinese message boards that slowly trickle out to the others so we will see what's happening with that but let's get into it but first uh who do we got in the chat today we have princeton phalanx 59 we got timmy k point dexter we got uh patrick brown we got will murphy we have James Hopkins. We got T-Formers 2002. Billy B, one of my patrons, actually. Um, who else? Ashnut is here, representing the magic. Horned Owl is back. Want to make sure I don't miss nobody, because everyone is slowly coming in. Rodimus Power is coming in. So, let's cover the news. Let's cover some updates on the news, and... Uh, then we'll just take some super chats from you awesome guys the rest of the evening. I got some cool little things here and there that I picked up this weekend. Uh, nothing Transformer related, but still kind of nostalgia bombs if you were a, a kid of the 80s and 90s. So let's jump into it. The first thing we're going to be covering is uh, Evan from Hasbro uh, Design. He posted, oh, we already got a super chat in right away. And, and there you go. Space Ghostal, a.k.a. Michael, is going to be talking, is pretty much saying what I'm going to talk about. Finally got Swoop. Oh, here, Michael, I'll just put it up here while we're at it. Uh, finally got Swoop. What's the longest time frame it took for a complete set like this? Is this the longest? Um, It's a really good question. Uh, the longest to get, well, when you because, you know, Dinobots as a set, right? So, I mean, you could argue, because Dinobots are like a sub-faction. I mean, one could argue, like, have we really completed our mini-bots yet? Have we really completed our throttle bots? Like, we have a gold bug. When are we going to get the others? You know, so, I mean, it, that's that's really a dubious question at best because, I mean, you want to say maybe a sub-faction. It's like, do you, like, Dinobots only until recently were something that could fall under a combiner thing. So, that's a tough one because there's so many, again, sub-factions that still haven't been completed today. You know, so, I don't know. But that that's a tough one. That's a really tough one because there's still a lot of open-ended stuff. Uh, you know, some might even argue that, you know, we never got like our our complete Dinobots from, not Dinobots, uh, Constructicons from, from Animated. You know, we never got those figures. So how long are we going to wait until we get those guys or something like that? So who knows? But thank you for the super chat, Michael. Um, well, in this the case, the YouTube member question. So again, Evan posted these on his Instagram, some beautiful images of our leader class swoop, and uh, really gives us a, a good indication of what's going on here. Uh, it also gives more of a, a clearer indication of what's going on with the swords and what's going to be happening with that, where, you know, that, that comic book Grimlock that we're going to be getting, all the swords that are included with that are actually based off of the comic book style. So if you want to get like the complete swords for all your Dinobots, there might be a different release in the future that will give you swords for your other members. We will see. But at the end of the day, uh, very fantastic. Very much looking forward to it. Could anyone confirm? I'm hearing conflicting information here. I probably should have just 
messaged Evan directly, but I know that I've been so busy this week. I just haven't had any opportunities to talk to even like, like BMAC and all of them. BMAC's going, his, his wife's going to pop any day now and give birth. So they're all kind of busy, but does that stand come with the swoop or is that something that's just individual? I mean, it would make sense if it did because swoop is going to be a lot less plastic and you could kind of throw that in, but I don't think it comes with the stand. That's to my knowledge. And then I'm hearing other people say otherwise. And, you know, unfortunately, there's no official sources yet that say it. So what's up, Larry? How you doing, Larry? Um, but yeah, we will see. We'll see. But at the end of the day, I mean, I think he looks great. I love that they went with the blue chest. I love that diaclone color scheme. Uh, if you want to know the whole history on that, go check out the individual segment about Swoop and Diaclone and Hasui-san and all that crazy, crazy stuff. T Formers 2002 says that's just a random stand. Well, there you go. See, that's why, because people were saying, like, no, it comes with the stand. You know, and I'm just like, really? I did not hear that anywhere. I just heard it's blast effects, you know, two missiles and two swords. Like, I didn't hear about anything else. And to me, all that enough is, you know, for a leader class box to begin with. So, okay, at least that clears that up a little bit, you know. That's why we we use the, the live stream for updates to the news when stuff is still questionable at best but i mean he looks great looks great looks absolutely great and especially i like that evan mentioned because what now with the swoop coming out we have demand for the other dinobots you know we're, we're so far away from when that first studio series grimlock came out that they're going to be re-releasing that grimlock it will have people will have another opportunity don't overpay for a grimlock in the secondary market you will get your chance again i mean I don't know if Goober's in the chat, but Goober paid like 250 bucks for his Grimlock. And I was just like, no, no, sir. You know, just wait, just wait. You'll get your chances and those chances will pop up, you know? So, but very excited about it. Very happy to see we're now kind of complete our, our core Dinobots. We might see other members in the future, the scars, the paddles, the slashes, who knows how that'll, that'll be done. But uh, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, at least we're done our core Dinobots. And then we'll see G2 colors on this guy. Who knows what they'll do? We'll get a Toxitron collection, Swoop, all kinds of nutty stuff. Mayor, mayoral fabrication with the $2 Super Chat. Uh, was Playmates involved in the new Turtle Van? Um, all of the, every single collaboration that Hasbro does is actually done not even by the Rhode Island team. So every collaboration, this is this comes straight from Mark himself. And I think he mentioned it briefly. I think he mentioned it even briefly in the uh the live stream when when the the party wallop was revealed. So all the the collaboration stuff, they're all done uh partially with Takara, but mostly with the West Coast team of designers. And that's why they have a very unique kind of aesthetic to them. Obviously, when they do stuff that's like retools, like let's say the the uh, the expanse, the uh, the X Men jet and everything, the Blackbird, you know, some of those are just pretty much you know the original toys with slight altercations and stuff. But they're actually done by the West Coast crew and everything. So Playmates is not involved. Uh, it's more just of a an agreement and a licensing thing. Hasbro's been doing a lot of uh, what's up, Aaron. Hasbro's been doing a lot of. Uh, a lot of just little things here and there in terms of like they're doing the, the thing with 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 Mattel. They're doing now stuff with Playmates. I mean, let's let's just start talking to Bandai now and and get that trifecta going. You know, heck, we got uh, you know we got the the Beyblade Transformers coming. Maybe we could get some Bakugan Transformers with Spin Master. Who knows? Who knows? Anything is possible. Anything is possible. But yeah, super hyped about Swoop. Can't wait uh, for him to come out. Thank you for the super chat, Mayoral. I hope to see more today. Um, next up, we're going to actually, oh my goodness, we're going to be talking about third party for a second, but that's only due to my own kind of selfishness of my connection to this vehicle. Uh, let's talk about the uh, Ocular Max Stray IF um, using the AE86 Toyota Corolla, aka Toyota Turino. Um, 1983 to 1986 Toyota Corolla GTS dual overhead cam, four cylinder, rear wheel drive, front engine, pop up headlights, Panda edition. Love it. 
Love it. Oh, we got a whole bunch of gifted mu- subs again. Prince and Phalanx 59 gifted five subs. <laughs> Larry got a sub. Oh, goodness. Larry doesn't need a sub. <laughs> you know, that's, it's always hilarious when people, whenever someone gifts five subs, it always lands on someone that doesn't need a sub. Like, it's like if Aaron Archer got a sub. You know what I mean? It's like, really? You know? Larry, hey, Larry, you got a sub. I don't have a, a sunstreaker icon for you that you could that you could set up, but oh well. No matter the cost. Oh my goodness, that's hilarious. Um, but yeah, again, to people that are wondering, you know, they're they're looking at this, and a lot of people are like, "Oh, what is this old, you know, early '80s boxy kind of car?" The Toyota Corolla 86 is a legendary vehicle, known as one of the drift king cars. Just absolutely massively insane and powerful i mean you could take your ferraris you could take your lambos you could take all of that you take it to a circuit that actually has corners and this monster of a machine will do its job um need i say more but i am so happy that this exists um i mean for the longest time the closest thing that we had you know not counting like if you go to my individual segment about them i talk about the q transformers jazz and I talk about like, you know, that's the closest we ever got to one. But I mean, we even had like the 86 Toyota Supra from uh, if anyone remembers the GoBot Puzzlers back in the day. Uh, there was one that looked so close to the 86 Corolla, but just not quite because it was the Toyota Supra, which has different, different, different kind of sculpting and differences on it. Same, you know, similar, but not quite. And of course, it was the police version. So you have to like screw off that police part and everything. And it's a whole story. But either way. Just wanted to talk about it. Just wanted to bring light to it. Um, I'm very excited about it. And, you know, this is also something that I don't really see Hasbro doing. I don't, you know, the, unless they like revive, you know, the only way I could see something like this happen is number one, if they revive the alternators line and start doing stuff that's not current. If they do another period piece Transformers movie that is in the 80s and then somehow one of the characters ends up being a Toyota Corolla, which I doubt. You know, because Hasbro and Toyota rarely kind of do collaborations, if at all. I mean, the closest I could even think of is like, again, going to Q Transformers. They've done more stuff with Honda now that I think about it. You know, they're like between skids with the Honda City Turbo and a few others, like not many Toyota stuff, interestingly enough. I need some water. It's going to be one of those days. Um, But yeah. What do we say here, Billy B? I've noticed that Hasbro reveals are getting closer to release dates, i.e. Sun, uh, Sunstreaker and Sideswipe. Is that the cut down on stolen reviews? Um, actually, maybe quite the opposite. I mean, a lot of times the stolen reviews, the stolen items come from the factory long before they even uh, make it to, to retail. Because you have to understand, like, the factory stolen items, they're stolen from the factory in Vietnam. It used to be China back when it was um, Jetta Plastics in China and Shenzhen. Um, but let, to give an example, like during the the big heist days that were happening in the like the late 2009s and 10s and stuff with, you know, YouTubers, I will not mention. But uh, they would get stolen from the factory and then they would get sold and shipped directly to the YouTube reviewer. But the actual product itself, it would get manufactured in the factory, be, you know, put on boats that go, take three months to get to the Western world. And then they get shipped to, you know, Hasbro Longueuil for packaging and and then put into packaging and all that done. And then it gets shipped to distributors and then to the retailers. It's so the usually stolen re, stolen reviews are way ahead from a release date, way ahead. So uh, it's I think they're just more they're they're just backed up, in my opinion. I think that they're late primarily because uh, it's just something where. They've been trying to get everything up to speed. I honestly think that's why we had new rele- new reveals every week during March, because I think that if they had to wait to do like one a month, they would have been ridiculously behind. And I think this was just a way to do a little bit of a catch up, but not quite because it still wasn't good enough. But we'll see. In all honesty, I, I feel that and it's not me like saying like hey it should be me i don't think so because then i'd have to move to rhode island that ain't ain't happening um 
not in a million years, but it's something where they should really have someone on staff that could kind of be like a weekly kind of like, hey, this is in the pipelines, you know, and just do a stream like, you know, even if it's like 30 minutes, 15 minutes, just have someone on staff that could kind of do that just to be ahead of everyone else, you know? I mean, I would like to not have to talk about figures based off of listings and blurry images. I would like to be able to talk about figures through nice, clear images and with the actual information from the designers. So that would be way more exciting to do. It's it's and it's more thought provoking. You know, it's something where I, I speculation is not as fun as when you actually have the answers. So we will see. We will see. Uh, Cringe McCringle. Hey, pro uh, Jigsaw, by the way. Thank you, T formers. It was Jigsaw, which was, yeah, basically the long haul. Uh, yeah, I know. And you just you destroy his headlights if you transform them. That's the worst part because of the chrome strip. Uh, James Hopskin, throttle bots close to that mold. Is there a throttle bot close to that mold? Mm -hmm. Not really. I mean, you. I think I know who you're talking about. You're talking about searchlight. Eh, not really. I mean, the closest, honestly, I could say to an '86 Corolla is if you look at like the Omnibots, like the mail order Omnibots from '85. You kind of have stuff that's in that same kind of hatchback shape, but still not exactly. And maybe if you squint with some of the micro masters, but still not exactly. I mean, like if you took like uh, Swindler, which is actually the DeLorean, you know, yeah, you could kind of squint and see it. Uh, back to Cringe McCringle uh, watching WrestleMania. I actually, I'm gonna be catch, I'm gonna be catching up on it. I was watching a bit of it. I had to stop to do this, but I will be catching up on it. Sunday will be the bigger day anyway. So, uh, my biggest takeaway from WrestleMania thus far, I'm very happy for Bull Nakano getting inducted into the Hall of Fame. Bull Nakano was a ridiculously famous female wrestler in Japan that actually only had a very short stint in uh, the WWF during the '90s against. Um, Alondra Blaze, aka Medusa, and uh, Bull Nakano looks like completely different. And it's funny because I knew that she lost a lot of weight before because uh, I think it was the Young Bucks. No, it wasn't the Young Bucks. It was Mar Ma uh, Mark Cardona. Um, what's his name? He went to Bull Nakano's bar, and I was like, "Oh my God, she looks even more beautiful now than when she did when she was young." You know, like so she lost a lot of weight. She looks great. You know, props to her. They don't crack. Let me tell you. So great, happy that she's in the Hall of Fame. She deserves it just as much as uh, any of the other females back in the day because she was huge in Japan in the 90s. Huge, 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 huge in Japan. And her hair was was wild. And her paint, makeup work, great stuff. Just kind of want to deviate to some wrestling talk for a moment because I'm a big 90s mark, of course. Um but yeah, yeah, I'm not going to spoil anything with WrestleMania. Don't worry. I'm going to, I'm going to, same thing. Like, don't, no spoilers now because I'm not watching now. So, like, I'm going to go back and watch later today uh, with some good food, which we'll talk about in a moment. Um, but yeah, you know, very excited about this A86. We'll definitely have more updates on it. I mean, I owned this original car. So, good times, good times. Uh, we got an update also to our, uh, our Super Ginrai, aka, uh, Power Master Optimus Prime from the MPG, MPG-09. Uh, we got some more clear images that show, like, you know, just more poses, gives a better look at some of the other stuff. But the big takeaway from it, more than anything else, because nothing has changed, it's still the same release date that's going to be happening in December of 2024. We, we still know that this is going to be more or less with exchange about a $320 item or maybe 310. Again, Hasbro Pulse, usually when they get these items, they somehow cut a deal with Takara and it ends up even being cheaper than a direct exchange rate. But the big takeaway is we actually get a good look of the accessory rollout now. And I love what I see because we get we get two gu two black guns that represent the guns that he held in his hand. The guns are also styled in a different way that could be used for the base mode or alternatively the combiner mode. So it also kind of has a nice element to that too. He has the two dual blaster. Uh, they were called, I think they were called the uh, electric concussion guns, the two dual blasters that also go in the base mode and in the combined mode. Two different head sculpts. There's probably going to have like battle damage from the Battle on the Moon. The Chocone Power 
uh, energy blasts, which or energy like you know field when he charges up Dragon Ball style. He comes with an actual Ginrai figure that becomes the engine and a miniature crossed you know God on posed little mini figure too. So a lot of really cool stuff going on. Extra pieces, sticker sheets. I love what I see here. I am so hyped about it. Again, Master Force is in my top three Transformer series of all time. And Jinrai and all of those characters were a prime example of if you want to have humans and Transformers, here's how you do it right. You know, And it was such a great series. And I love that it was like an international thing. There's all, from all different parts of the world and just all kinds of adventures. And just, it was so Japanese. But on top of it all, it really was the very first Transformer series that that opened it up to what would be, I call the brave formula. The fact that, you know, halfway through the series, there's a combiner element to the leader. You have the bad guys that always came in, in trios, like the, the doofus group. And then the elite group comes later, which was like you had the pretenders first. They were more like the doofus beastie kind of bad guys. And then later on, the more elite group with the Godmaster bad guys show up. And you would see that formula repeated over and over and over what Brave series is. And like you even with car robots, robots in the skies, you had the doofus beast characters. And later on you had the, the Decepticons or the combat trons or whatever you want to call it with, with car robots and robots in the skies. And they would repeat this over and over with other series is I'm super excited about this. I'm tempted to get both versions because there's going to be the MPG version. And then there's going to be another one later on. Uh, that's going to be more of the toy accurate one that comes with a sticker sheet. So I'm, it's going to cost a pretty penny. But at the same time, I rather get something that's the end all be all of a character. And then really anything that's going to come afterwards will always be kind of less, in my opinion. So very excited. Let me know what you think, but I'm down for that. Next up was uh, the item that I talked about Saturday. I said that there is some images that have been kicking around on the Chinese message boards and and, and Weibo and, and Baidu and all these Chinese blogs and stuff. And they had not trickled on to the Western websites yet. So I didn't want to talk about them until those Western websites talk about it. And then when that cat is out of the bag, then I will cover it. And well, one of those popped up today, uh, not today, but actually a few days ago. And it was that of our uh, Legacy United Deluxe Class Sideburn. Um, Man, uh, people are so divided on this. It's crazy. I mean, if go watch my individual segment. I get into the budget of it, you know, how paint decos work and how they went about it and how they did quite a good job with the paint decos and everything. I get that, you know, people really want to see a whole retool of the car. But I mean, the Dodge Viper thing couldn't have happened. And the closer you get to that sun, the more you're going to burn your wings, Icarus. You know, you can't always do that. And, and you know, look, let's let's be real. You know, when we're talking the original toy, the original toy will always be amazing. Th those original car robot uh, designs, Robots in the Skies 2015, they'll always be amazing toys. They'll always have like that that prototypical kind of alternators feel to them where it's real cars, but they're still, you know, a retail product that isn't a one by 32 scale like the the alternators. But I mean, to quote my brothers in the street, she might look good in the front. Sometimes in the back, it's a bit of a disaster. And, uh, you know, that's where, at least in the case of um, in the case of uh, this one here, uh, you won't suffer from crazy amount of kibble that the original sideburn mold suffered from. And I still think it looks great. I think that head sculpt is right on point. I love the fact they kept the translucent on the little scouter reader, Dragon Ball style. I think it looks great. And you know what? Look, this is going to be in display in robot mode for 99.9% .9 of people. You won't even feel the the flawed non-Dodge Viper car mode to begin with. Uh, so I think it looks great. I mean, the only thing that kind of sucks is it would have been cool to have the drag knife and the exhaust bar gun be two separate weapons instead of a combined weapon. You know, what was it called there? Uh, Legacy evolution power that they had just combining weapons together and calling it evolution. But at the same time, I understand people's you know, I think that the people that are disappointed with it are the ones that own the original and know how great that original one is. And in by comparison, yeah, that kind of sucks. But at the same time, you know, I think it's it's a good opportunity. It's a good update. And if you know, to play devil's advocate, maybe they're just doing this just so you could get a better one later. Maybe, maybe. 
Uh, let's read some uh, mentions. Uh, let's see. Um, Ashnode says, disappointed. Only way to, to get him is on deep sale. Well, that'll probably happen. <laughs> if history has said anything about our deluxe price point, we'll get a sale at some point. Uh, D.W. Brown says, most disappointed that Cyburn robbed us of a Cyberverse shadow strike. Well, yeah, that one, I agree with you there. I'll just finish your thing. Robbed us of a sh Cyberverse shadow striker that looked like she would have been in the show. I agree with you there 100%. Uh, it's kind of the same thing. Like, you know, you could argue like, man, we would have probably got a great Cyberverse Chromia if it wasn't for that animated Prowl, right? <laughs> you know, like it's it's something where I agree I would have loved a more better Shadow Striker based off of the Cyberverse design because she never really got a proper toy, especially like the best one is like the Ultra Scale. And that thing is like ridiculously out of scale with everything and has weird kibble and stuff. And Chromia never got a decent toy. All she got was that tiny turbo changer. And I'm not counting that, you know? So it is what it is. I still think it looks pretty good. I'm going to definitely, you know, this is this is a companion piece for your HasLab item. We know that we're getting a Skybite in the future too. So we're definitely going to see more robots in disguise, car robot stuff in the near future. And this is just another piece of that to build up a modern collection of it. And in all honesty, I think it could have been a lot worse. I mean, we've had like the sideburn that was a straight up repaint of the uh, the Classics Hot Rod. And I love Classics Hot Rod, but that's not a sideburn mold, you know? So this is a lot better. Um, but maybe we'll, maybe they'll get maybe we'll get something better in the future. Maybe we will. Maybe we'll get a reissue, you know? Maybe we'll get a reissue or something. No matter the uh, cost. Plecoptoplaco, I apologize if I can't pronounce that. Welcome to being a YouTube member on the podcast. Thank you very much. Um, I, I, I like the robot mode. You know what I mean? I think the robot mode is really good. The car mode, I understand it's, it's not your Dodge Viper. I get it. But I think, you know, this is something I feel when I'm going to get it in hand, I'm still going to be pretty down for it, you know? But that's just me. That's just me. Uh, Alice Devil, what's up, Alice? Uh, I really hope uh, we get a universe colors for Shadow Strike and Roulette. I see that was the other thing. It's like, so I was like, hey, we're gonna probably get the hot rod colors. Uh, Roulette would be cool though. Roulette would be really cool just to like, you know, we could have Shadow Striker, we have Roulette. It'd be cool if Roulette uh happens and we get a third brand new head sculpt. Like, we'll have the Shadow Striker head sculpt, we'll have this sideburn one, and then Roulette will have her unique head sculpt that we got from Bacon back in the day in 2001. Because I own like the original Roulette and Shadow Striker, and those are really cool head sculpts. And the comic book that they had with the Universe comic books at the time with the Wreckers. Oh, great stuff. Great stuff. Great stuff. Um, where are we at? How is it? Plico Plico? Oh, is that how it's pronounced? I don't know. I apologize. When I see something that's like a new name, it's like, oh, okay. Plico Plico. I hope I pronounced that right. If I'm wrong, just let me know. Uh, next up, next up, we got the Swapticons here. Here's a weird one. Uh, so we got some listings for what is a potentially 2025 brand new kind of subline. I'm, I'm predicting probably something in that same line of the hero mashers or like something that something that's really outside of mainline stuff. Uh, yeah, Playco, Playco. Uh, there we go. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you again for joining. Um, I plan to, plan to talk more. Yeah. So, um, the Swapticons here, if you saw my individual segment, the big thing that I take away from this is every single two pack has a similar shape, you know? And what I mean by that is like, it's the alt modes, the alt modes seem to be shared across every single two pack, which means that this is something that's going to lean heavily on some kind of alt mode swapping because, you know, oh, swap the cons. Maybe it's like the Energon power linking. Maybe it's like crash combiners. Maybe it's going to be something that's like, again, the hero mashers where it's swapping pieces and parts. But the fact that you have two packs that have the same kind of general shape of alt mode, you know, to me, it's like, man, like a flat nose truck, Optimus and Ultra Magnus, Megatron and Shockwave could be two guns, could be two tanks. They both have been those. Bumblebee and Hot Rod, two sports cars. 
you know, Grimlock and Snarl, two dinosaurs, Cheetor and, and, and Tigatron, two big cat-shaped items, Starscream and Thundercracker, two jet-shaped items, Nemesis Prime and, and Clutch, two long-nosed trucks with dark color schemes, Shadow Panther and Ravage, two big cats that use dark color schemes. So, like, there's similarities across the board here. So I'm very curious what this is, but at the same time, I have a feeling, I have a feeling, it's uh, it's not going to be something too exciting. I think the, the biggest exciting thing that we could take away from all of this is that Clench trademark, because <laughs> Clench was the name of uh, Armada, Armada Galvatron's Minicon. We have Armada Galvatron that we're going to be getting soon in the future that we already saw. So maybe we'll be getting our Armada Galvatron Minicon with Clench. Maybe we'll get an update of the UK character, you know, at some point. it The big takeaway is, hey, the Clench trademark is back under the Hasbro umbrella. And that means potentially we could see future product based off of that trademark. Or they could use Clench and use it for G.I. Joe or whatever, too, because there's also characters that shared that across other brands. But there is a possibility. And that's all I, I could really take away from that at the end of the day. And the last thing we're going to cover uh, is a pre-order popped up and a pre-order drop date on Entertainment Earth for something Transformers 1. Potentially, potentially. You tell me. Let's read this together. Thursday, April 18th, Transformer Thursday on top of that, at uh, 10 Pacific time, again, a 1 p.m., much like we've had in the past. What does it say here? What could this be? Can we we can give you one capital one hint? That's it. That's the hint. Sign up for a reminder. So, could we potentially be seeing some Transformer One items very soon, as of uh, April eighteenth? That's pretty. Uh, that's pretty ballsy. I mean, it's still a while away. It's not this Thursday. You know, it's still a couple of weeks away. But. Uh, it looks like we're finally going to be learning something because let's be real. This movie is supposed to come out this year and we know what about it. <laughs> we know like absolutely nothing. We had Chris Hemsworth answering some questions briefly in an interview. And that was about it. You know, like nothing publicly has been discussed otherwise outside of closed, you know, room marketing licensing stuff and the recounts of those people of what they got to see. So that's pretty cool if that is the case. I mean, the fact that it has a capital on one. Now, here's the thing. Maybe I'm missing something. Is there a Marvel or a Ghostbusters or a Star Wars brand that has a capital one as part of its vernacular and trademarking? And I'm missing something or G.I. Joe? I don't know. I like to believe that I have good knowledge on that stuff, but maybe I'm missing something here. Um, but it does sound like it could be a Transformers 1 item. You know? Uh, Pleco Pleco says it looks promising. T-Formers 2002, this movie is just over five months away and barely any info. Yeah, that's why. So I think this is probably going to be our big drop. We might get uh, We might get potentially a bunch of toy reveals. And then maybe around that, we'll probably get maybe a video game reveal. Keep in mind, too. Keep in mind, too. July, we have San Diego Comic-Con. So that's a great place to do, like, big reveals for, like, movie trailers. So that might be a big thing also. So we'll see. We'll see. But I am uh, I am quite curious. But I think that we're probably going to get everything dropped in our lap very quickly. And in all honesty, in all honesty, guys, that was kind of the same thing with Rise of the Beasts. Like, we learned about everything of Rise of the Beast within, like, the last four months leading up to the movie. Look at the timeline. Look at the timeline. Like, we had, like, the Super Bowl and all that kind of stuff, and then it was just boom, 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 boom. And next thing you know, like, we're in we're in July, and we have the movie, you know? Or June, excuse me. So it's something where I kind of imagine we might be in the same boat here. That's what I think anyhow, you know? Maybe like San Diego will be like a big reveal and the toys, were, you know, we'll get our toy spoilers, as I like to call it first. We'll get our toy stuff shown to us first. So we'll get an idea of the characters and their visuals and how they're supposed to look. And then we'll get the trailer at San Diego Comic-Con and that'll be the big reveal. And San Diego will do that. And Hasbro will have a crazy panel and da da da. We'll see. We'll see. But again, mark it on your calendar, April 18th. 
something's coming. Something's coming in April. That's probably going to be where our next fan stream will be, too. Just putting it out there. So uh, we will see. Take a guess. Your guess is as good as mine, but we will see. And that's it more or less for the news. Um, got some stuff we'll talk about in a moment that we picked up today out in the open of the toy world. Uh, but let's do some uh, let's do some sponsorships, and then we'll uh, get into that, and we'll take some YouTube and Super Chats. Super Chats from the fans. First, we're going to start, of course, with Symbiote. Symbiote Studios, plush pins and T-shirts. The brand new Hot Rod and Ultra Magnus is out in the store right now, so go pick that one up. It's been selling quite well, actually. Uh, also, the Winter Wonder Festival Convoy set is on its way out, so be sure to pick that one up, too. Go pick up some of the others. All the great little Transformer plushes. Restocks will be available. And they will also be at San Diego Comic-Con with a brand new San Diego Comic-Con exclusive. Stay tuned for that. I don't know when that's going to be revealed, but uh, already seen it, and it's looking cool. We have an SDCC exclusive lined up, as well as a whole bunch of other stuff for 2024 in the second half of the year. A lot of great stuff. Go check it out. Symbiotestudios.com. The official source for official, licensed, ongoing, 100%. It's not stopping. Transformers plush. Not one of those, you know, oh, we're going to do a couple and then, you know, that's it. This is the real deal, people. And of course, all the other Hasbro brands too. My Little Pony G.I. Joe, Power Rangers, Magic the Gathering stuff here and there. Go check it out. It's all good. It's all good. Some stuff on sale even. And uh, let's talk about the Toy Armada. We have our brand new segment on the Toy Armada talking about Energon. Go check that one out. Uh, behind the scenes of the early development of Transformers Energon, a.k.a. Superlink in Japan. Super Rinku. And uh, we go deep into a lot of the decisions that were made. Is this a co continuation? Did what did they want to make it a continuation? Why did they go from cell to CG? The choices, the this, the that. Why was that first wave filled with repaints? You know, all the interesting stuff. Go check it out. The Toy Armada with Aaron Archer. Beautiful one-hour segment of me and Aaron talking about the robots in the skies. As well as some other good stuff too. And uh, Aaron, I believe, I don't know if he publicly announced that he is moving. So you might not see uh, some live streams on his end for the next couple of weeks or so. Uh, Aaron, let the people know what's up. You know. Uh, and speaking of which, go support Aaron. You can go to archermonster.com forward slash shop and pick up The Art of Transforming Robots Volume 2. Stock is running low, so pick it up while you can because Volume 3 will be debuting in the near future. I believe at TFCon, Toronto will be the debut of Volume 3. So, uh, But get Volume 2 while you can because when it's gone, it's gone, and then you're going to have to rely on eBay and all the crazy secondary market people that buy it for 20 and sell it for 40 Better off to buy it from Aaron. Give him your hard you know, earned $20 and then pay an extra 15 bucks and get Aaron to make something specially for you, a custom sketch, just like what I have of Hot Rod, because he's the best. <laughs> um, and then, of course, we have some brand new instruction paintings this week. A whole bunch of new ones were added to the store today. So you could get the Terracon Cliff Jumper. You got Retgar over there. You got a Alternator's... Uh, Alternator Subaru, which is the best one. Alternator Subaru smokescreen. You got a lockdown, as well as many others on the store that are not shown here. Go check it out again, archermonster.com forward slash shop. Pick them up while you can. One of a kind pieces that you could have it framed and shown on your wall of your Transformer collection. From the man who worked on all that stuff. That's it for sponsorship. So what did we get? What did we get? So I do my, my tour for toys. I always look around here and there, seeing what's in the market to pick up. I go to my used toy shops and collect little things here and there. And there wasn't much, honestly, this week. Um, we had a kind of like a snowstorm a little bit a, a few days ago, so uh, not much movement. But I did pick up two interesting items. Uh, first one that's less interesting. Uh, one half of a, uh, anyone remembers Dragonflies? So there were Sky Dancers for girls, which was the thing that you pulled, and the little... Uh, I believe there was a viral video of a little girl who had a Sky Dancer that went into the fire. 
And they actually made some Dragonfly Skydaster-esque uh, Transformer ones recently, too. So I collect the original Dragonflies from the 90s. And sometimes I, whenever I find their launchers or stuff like that, I always buy them when I see them. Bought this for a buck. Uh, because usually the strings are broken on these. So, you know, you get them in the secondary market. Although the original owner put a a, a, a knot on the end. So I'm going to have to undo that knot. Because that just looks silly. But this is Apex's dragon from uh, uh, Dragonflies. Flight is might. Anyone remembers that? Um, this is done by a Canadian company. Always had a soft spot for terrible 90s toy lines. That's always been my kryptonite. And Dragonflies with a Z falls into that category uh, with that too. So pretty awesome stuff. And my big find today I was happy with. <laughs> um, Godzilla. So back in the day, Hanna-Barbera did a Godzilla cartoon back in the day and it was not successful for you know, 80 stories high Godzilla Godzilla and Godzuki which you know they had to make it like have a kid's element to it because it's Hanna-Barbera nothing could ever be serious back then so they made a Godzilla design that was different from the traditional Godzilla and then a bootleg company took the design of that Godzilla and made no joke. It's called Fart Ar Fart Fart Arsaurus, which was they took that design and then they put a little kazoo on the back of it. No joke. And then they what happens is is they they're inside this originally. It used to have what was called a bladder, like an air bladder, and the factory would fill it with air, and then you'd be able to squeeze it and it would fart. No joke, because it had like a little kazoo in its butt here, and so the. The legendary Hanna-Barbera Godzilla was bootlegged and turned into Fartosaurus. You can look this up. It's an actual item. And so I found this for a dollar, dollar Canadian, so like 60 cents American. This was made in 1984, and I was more than happy to leave with this. I remember I was walking. I was in the mall when I when I picked it up because the, the toy store was there. I was in the mall holding it like this, and I was just so happy. I was just like, oh, my God, this is great. I love old kaiju stuff, you know, like, again, shout outs to Toy City you know, with the kaiju stuff, but love it, love it, love it, love it. So that was my nice little kaiju find there. Um, but yeah, dragonflies. Yeah, love that, love that. Yeah, well, Sky Dancers came first. That was like the girl line. It's funny, it's like like dragonflies is like Mighty Max, you know? It's like Mighty Max, where it's like, you had Polly Pocket first by Bluebird, the toy company. And then like, oh, Polly Pocket does well. Let's do a boy version. And then it was Mighty Max. And the same thing. Sky Dancers came first, which, damn, I wish I remember the name of the company. It wasn't Tyco. I think it was Irwin Toys, if I'm correct. Because hmm, usually, you know, so the problem is, is I know that the uh, the trademarks are not on the launchers. They're on the, uh, the figures. Um, but yeah. Yeah, literally. What, yeah, I think it was 1984 this came out. Yeah, it was 84. Great stuff. I, I love... I love because it's an old Sufobi kind of rubber figure too. Like these are, I love old historical items because, you know, the one thing, and I, I don't want to rag on toys today, but it's like Transformer toys in 2010 and Transformer toys in 2020, they're more or less the same kind of manufacturing style. And I'm not saying the toys are bad. I'm saying the manufacturing style is more or less the same. So you don't really have like a piece of time in a lot of ways. Maybe you could argue like, oh, there's more paint in one than the other or more plastic. You could argue that for sure. But in terms of like just difference of manufacturing, like you don't see stuff like this anymore. And I, I did. I love this kind of stuff. Love it. Love it. Love it. Um, I mean, it's like that's why I love like Street Sharks, because it had like that real feel skin and stuff. and. Great, 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 great. Uh, was it Spin Master? Was it Spin Master that did uh, Dragonflies? That makes sense. Again, Canadian company. Because I know that the animations were done by the Canadian studios for both of them, for Sky Dancers and Dragonflies. Light is might. Uh, Paul with the $5 super chat. Did you have a favorite April Fool's joke this year, TF related or otherwise? Honestly, I'll be honest with you, as someone who values information and news, I hate April Fools, I'll be honest with you, 
because sometimes someone will post something that's really cool and then it makes me depressed because it's not happening. So like some people will post like, hey, we're working on this toy line or that toy line. And it's a really obscure, dumb toy line. And I'll be like so excited about it. And then, no, it's not happening. Uh, I will say the best April Fool's ever was when Nintendo did that. Or was it IGN News or something? They did that crazy Legend of Zelda trailer movie. Like it was like a live action movie. That was many years ago. But... Like that was probably the craziest April Fools I ever saw, um, but not really. I mean, my friend Andy, uh, him and his girlfriend uh, took photos in wedding dresses and then announced that he got married. Now keep in mind he was with his girlfriend for only two months, so that threw me back already. And then he, and then it was just like, no guys, April Fools, and I was like, okay, that's I don't know if that's cool, you know, like literally like. Everyone on Facebook and everything, we were all like, oh, congratulations. And then it was like, no, psych, we were just joking. It's like, I don't know. I don't know. April Fool's sometimes, it's like, uh, I don't know. I value information. And now you're playing with my heartstrings. So is it Galoob? Yeah, Galoob sounds about right, maybe. Godzuki. Some people know who Godzuki is. Um, yeah, MMC announced their female Galvatron on April Fool's. Yeah, well, that's why. And imagine, imagine how many people were probably like, dude, that's super cool. I want that. And then, no, psych. <laughs> um, it, it is what it is. You know, like Every time April Fool's comes by, I just I go, okay. I'm going to be careful what news I read. going to be careful what I react to. and. Uh, just wait this one out, <laughs> wait this one out and hope that something better comes along. That's a little more uh, legit, but yeah, either way. So that was my, my finds. I found some other stuff too, but nothing, nothing too major worth mentioning. Uh, mostly just like Marvel legends figures that I was missing and stuff like that, but they're already in the, in the displays and everything. Cause me, I, 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 as a Canadian buying Marvel legends at like 34 99 is brutal. And then you, literally you find the same Marvel Legends complete loose for like 15 bucks cash, no tax. And we have 15, we have 13% tax. So, you know, so on top of that. So like, it's, it's so worth it just to wait most of the time with characters. I mean, even at the last TFCon I did with, with uh, Aaron Archer in uh, Orlando, I picked up Marvel Legends for so cheap because it was just like, I'm not going to buy, you know, first appearance, Iron Fist, Sabretooth for Twenty five ninety nine American when I could get it for ten bucks complete, you know, loose. Uh, Plinko, Plinko with the five dollar super chat. Thank you, thank you, thank you, my friend, and welcome again to the YouTube membership. I bought an Optimus Prime blanket and banner from you. Oh, you were the one who bought it. Yeah, you know what's funny? Again, what was funny with that was I had a whole bunch of those for years because. There was, God, what was the story with that? There was a company here in Montreal that did all kinds of like, there's a term, it's called the schmata business, which is like, it's a Yiddish term. The principle means like working in clothing and everything. But there's a whole bunch of schmata business stuff in um, in like East, East side Montreal. And they were producing the licensing for a whole bunch of transformer stuff. And those things like just ended up in like huge numbers in the secondary market. And I bought one, the one that you bought for me, I bought it at the time, maybe as something, something to drape because it was like a giant poster, like a giant cloth poster. That's the way I looked at it. It was gorgeous. And then I was just like, Oh, what am I going to do with this? You know what I mean? <laughs> what am I going to do with this? And then my friend then gave me one and he's like, cause he got one too. Cause a whole bunch of these ended up in the secondary market. And then he's like, could you just sell, sell uh mine? So I sold his and that was the one that you got was his in the end. And I'm happy you enjoy it. I mean, it's really cool. It, it, to me, anything that's G1 style that's done of that kind of stuff is always cool. Because usually you see like evergreen style or you see like, you know, other things like that. But I'm glad it's getting to good use. I hope you're hanging it. Like it, It's like a giant banner that's or a flag. That's the way I always looked at it, you know? And you bought the NES uh, Optimus. Oh, stay tuned. We have another TFCon exclusive coming this Toronto. 
Uh, I don't know when I'm going to be announcing that. I still have time. I still have time. Like it's, I think I'm going to announce the TFCon exclusive, maybe because I have San Diego Comic Con that same month, so I have to time it all perfectly. I'm going to probably announce it maybe the first week of July, because there's going to be a brand new TFCon exclusive that we're working on. Um, it's going to be pretty cool. People will dig it. It might actually be more popular than the first one. I'm not too sure. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. So that's going to be on its way. And then maybe we'll have something for Baltimore too. It's all long-term planning right now, but there will be a brand new TFCon exclusive. So stay tuned for that. And if you love the NES Optimus Prime, we do have some left. Uh, we had a little bit of inventory that we were going to bring to LA if we went. We obviously didn't go to LA. So that leftover inventory of 15 units of those 100 uh, is going to be brought to TFCon Toronto. So if you missed your opportunity to get a Optimus Prime, uh, Optimus Prime, uh, there will be 15 units left to pick up along with the brand new, the brand new, uh, brand new figure, which we'll reveal shortly. Um, where are we at? Where are we at? The past two still live on your desk. Yeah, man. Well, I did the Famicom boy. Yeah, I'm looking at mine. <laughs> the Famicom boy. Here's the prototype. I can show you guys the prototype now. So there was the prototype back in the day. That's how it was back in the day. So um, the Famicom boy and the uh, Optin S Prime by Bint Studios. Super talented people with art by Damon Bat and Josh Perez helped a little bit too with the designs of the stickers and everything. And uh, I, I wrote the bio and did the design of the figure itself and brainstormed everything. Um, where are we at? Where are we at? Where are we at? James Hopkins, anyone know how long that Transformers metal figs have been out? Ran across a few at Five Below the other day, grabbed Megs and Prime. Uh, James, I be I saw your message to me. I just haven't had a chance to respond because I've been so busy on the weekend. Those came out. If you actually look on the podcast, we did a segment about them. I want to say it was around the time when Rise of the Beast came out. No joke. It was a while back. You're talking about the Jada ones, the Jada Metals figures, the f not four inch, but like the three inch ones. Not well, not even three inch. They're more like two. Um, here. One sec. We're talking about this guy. Uh, these have been out for a while. These have been out for a very long time. And if and if a Montreal Quebecer has one, then they've been out for a long while because we're always the last to get almost everything usually. Usually, not always. But, you know, no reason why I have that here is because I have the other Jada set here also. So they are cool. They are cool. But if they're at five below... I don't know if that's a deal because I think those, I think those were already like, weren't they already like almost five bucks or like $6, you know? So either way, either way, but yeah, we have, we're going to have another TFCon exclusive, uh, ready by, we'll have it. We'll have the commercial and everything ready by Ju like the first week of July. We'll reveal it then. And then it will be available at TFCon and only TFCon, like it's the my rule is if you're if you're part of the Patreon, you get an opportunity to get it for free. Only my exclusive. I don't want to get it mixed up. There's other exclusives at TFCon. You get my exclusive for free if you've been a patron for two months or more as of TFCon. So if you register as a patron now and you stay as a patron, you will get the exclusive for free. You just have to pay shipping because I'm not losing my butt on shipping and shipping's like five, 10 bucks, depending on where you live. So it's not a big deal to get it, to get an exclusive. That's like 15, $20 for free. And all you have to pay is five, $10 in shipping. Pretty good, pretty good trade off. But so we have that coming. Um, and then we'll see, uh, what else we'll see what else, you know, there's a whole bunch of other stuff planned. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm going to be at San Diego Comic-Con with Symbiote Studios, so that's going to be pretty hype. So if you're in the L.A. or the San Diego West Coast area, swing by San Diego Comic-Con. I'll be at Symbiote's booth, and then I'm going to pop into the Hasbro booth for a bit, too. So uh, you could come meet me there also if you want. I don't know if I'll have an exclusive for that. I'll see how I feel. 
uh, cause San Diego's pretty crazy and I don't want to make promises. I can't keep when you have 200,000 people to deal with. So we will see. We will see. Uh, they are pretty cool little figures. Yeah. They're just, again, you know, like people always wonder like, why don't you do like a crazy, you know, like big, awesome figure or something with like one of the big third party companies, like I've done in the past, like the, some of the earlier TF con exclusives were ones that I got to work on. Like, the Optimus, uh, the, not the Optimus, the, the, the GoBots stuff, the Masterpiece Erector, which was called Chapter, the the Protoform X and Prototype Z, the, oh, geez, I'm, there's so many here. I'm just trying to look over. The uh, Mastermind Creations, you know, uh, Warden, the, so many, oh, the Powered Commander with, uh, with uh, Fans Project. You know, so many of those. It's because I like that when people come to TFCon, they could spend their big money in the dealer room, spend their big money with the guests, because that's a big thing too now. Like when I worked on a lot of those bigger exclusives, guest autographs are free. We're in a different world now. So you could go, go spend your money in the dealer room, get your cool stuff, go spend your money on the guests. You know, an autograph and a photo could sometimes run you $70. And then when you have that like 15, 20 bucks, you get a souvenir for the end of the weekend, you know, and you could have a TFCon exclusive that isn't going to be a hundred bucks, 200 bucks. Let's be real. Some TFCon exclusives are pretty expensive and I'm not saying they're bad exclusives. Some of them are really cool, but they can be expensive. So if someone wants to get a TFCon exclusive that isn't going to break the bank, you know, I'll make you some, you know, I have a whole, I have a whole bunch of the prototypes here. There are different versions. Make sure which was the best one. Um, my Optinus Prime fig lives in my bot bots. That's exactly what the intention was. <laughs> I want it because I love, I love the bot bots video game related figures that they've done, the little arcade, the little game cartridges. And I wanted to kind of continue that essence. And uh, I feel that I probably uh, achieved that in a small sense. Uh, T formers 2002. Good thing. I'll be in Toronto again this year to get it in person. Well, if you are a Patreon member, you just show me your phone and show me that you're a Patreon member, a registered Patreon member, and you get it for free in person, <laughs> in person. You don't even have to pay for it. So uh, again, if you're two months or more, a Patreon member, that's again, I, I give you guys opportunities to get it for free. <laughs> so uh, Transformatics, uh, how about a draw for all green names to maybe win one? Well, I could do a giveaway. That is something I probably could do. Um, maybe what I'll do, because we always have like a hundred units of it. Maybe what I'll do, because and 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 I know for a fact it doesn't sell out in Toronto. Toronto is a great show. I love TFCon Toronto, but it just doesn't have the the mass amount of people. I mean, whenever I do an exclusive and a debuts at Toronto, I know for a fact that then it's going to show up at the next show. So like when I did the Optinus Pro of the Famicom boy. We went to the following TFCon and it sold out afterwards because it's a USA show. We did the Optinus Prime. I brought that to Orlando. I had like very little left. Those disappeared. And then I had the little hot rods afterwards that I sold, which people really like those though. And I'll probably try to get more of those to bring people dug them again, cheap little items, you know, little $5 figures and stuff. Um, GoBots Vanguard. Yeah, that was me. Vanguardian actually was the name. Vanguard is his official name because I love Vanguard. It's my favorite GoBot. So I selfishly uh, convinced, uh, you know, uh, what was it was not Head Robots. What was the company at the time? Gosh, I don't remember. It all blends together. It's in the book. Hold on one moment. Uh, which art book? Which book was it? Which book was it? Was it this one? These are like the third party books which are done by uh, Philip Reed. One moment. Did we put it in this one? Just want to be sure before I, uh, before I make a fool out of myself. Um, Mini Warriors Hench. So there was these guys. So Mini Warrior Hench, and this became Vanguardian and Roswell. Uh, we don't have the TFCon ones, I don't think, in here. Let's see, we just have, these are photos for me, the beginning of third party. 
photos courtesy of Proto Man's collection. Because the very first third party stuff. Yeah. Let me check the second book. One moment. One moment. Let me check the second book. By the way, these books are like impossible to find now. Don't ask me where to get them. They're on Amazon and people are asking way too much money. They were a thing at one point that you could buy and then they weren't anymore. I would love it if people could get it because I helped contribute a lot to these books. Like a lot of the, the stuff that I got to work on. See, there's the, the shafter that I worked on. Let's see. Let me see. Is he in this one? Is he in this one? Fans Project. Is it Fans Project? It wasn't Fans Project. Did these, did they? There we go. There it is. That's my baby. Vanguardian by iGear. There you go. It was iGear that did the, the mini bots. So that was, so I remember they showed us this and they're like, what character you want to make? And I'm like, I want to make GoBots. And then we made an amazing comic book with Alex Milne and Josh Perez. Fantastic little comic. Um, probably one of Alex's best work, in my opinion, uh, working with him uh, with those two characters. That was really fun back in the day. Uh, I may go to TFCon if Make Toys is making the Beatles. Um, I don't know if Make Toys will be that. I can't confirm that. I have both eye gear henches. They look okay. They still look okay. Well, again, it, it, they were fun. They they are what they are for that time. You know, like I'm pretty sure if Hasbro would have put out something like that, people would have been all over it. Um, but yeah, I dug it. I dug it. A lot of good stuff. So now we're gonna have we're gonna have another little exclusive. That's all I can tell you. It's gonna be a little exclusive. Between that uh, fifteen to twenty dollar range, I'm not sure what the pricing will be yet. I'll have to figure that out. Uh, it'll come with a trading card with a little story on it and everything, and everyone could uh, everyone could chill and have a good time. Everyone could chill and have a good time. And again, if you want to be able to get an opportunity to get it and you're not able to go to TF Cons, join the Patreon because. And the only reason why I say join the Patreon is just because. I don't have a lot of them. I make 100 units. I bring it to the show. Some of them I give away to Patreon people in person. The others get bought by people. And then I have a scant little amount left. And again, those go to the Patreon people. I, I don't want to just put it on the internet and sell it. You know, yeah, there's going to probably be one or two people that flip them. So that might be your other chance is go on eBay, unfortunately, after the show. And someone might be buying them to put them on eBay, which I have seen in the past. Um, but then you're paying, you know, you're better off being a patron with me and you get it for free than buying it off of eBay and someone selling it. Like if I sell it for 15 Canadian and they're selling it for $40 American, I mean, do the math and shipping, you know? So I'm just saying for a cheaper option for you, that's all I say. But yeah. But yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's more or less it what is happening. I'm trying to think of what else has been going on recently. Not much else. But uh Plico Plico, the ex Transbot guys, I believe, were the ones that did the masterpiece ones. Again, it's been so long. The thing is, I'm for all the Transformer knowledge I have, it's like I it's like a part of my brain always forgets anything third party. It's just like, what was the name of that company? What was the name of it? Like, it's like, it's the not this. It's the not that. Like, I don't, you know, I usually don't remember. And I wrote the bios for some of them and I don't remember, you know? Like, I'm looking at them right now and I'm just going like, yeah, that was called Prototype X and Protoform Z. And then there was, you know, that Hard Heroes bust that we made anti uh, Anarchy back in the day. I don't know, a lot of cool stuff. But uh, those books, because some people, for people that are asking, here, let me just show the books again. Again, they're going to be tough because I know people are always asking. So you have Transforming Collections by Philip Reed. Uh, I, me, uh, TJ Duckett, and a few others did photography for it. Again, it's the history of third party from the early days, not the craziness today. And see, so there's Philip Reed. Thanks, you know, because I helped him with it. Um you know, so it's just like the history of third party, all the early stuff back in the day. See, so like really cool little book, cool little book. 
And then this one was so successful that then they made a sequel book again, which this one had a lot more TFCon stuff that I contributed to this one. There's like whole sections to it almost. Where is it? Where is it? <laughs> Proto Retro. You want to get, to, it doesn't get older Proto Man than that with the old Proto Retro logo there in the corner. Goodness. But yeah. You know, and so, and these books, you could probably find them on Amazon, but people are asking so much now. And these books, they used to be, no joke, they're, they're hardcover books. And these used to be $30 each. And now people, I don't know, it's a hundred bucks for them, which you should not pay that. I would suggest contact contacting Philip Reed on Kung Fu Grip. I think it's called kungfugrip.com and ask him if he has maybe dead stock and maybe he'll have one for you. But those are two really cool books if you want to get like the history of third party from the early years. Fans Project really kicked off the third party market. Well, they definitely kicked it off in the Western world. I will say that. Uh, we talked about it in the book where third party kind of always existed in a mild sense in Japan because Wonder Festival used to always do like one day licenses and you'd have third party items. And those have been around since like, you know, you could barely see it. I wish I don't want to go get it now in the glass case. I like the only, I have like one detoff of everything third party I own it shows how much I own very little. And uh, you know, like there's early stuff from like the early two thousands, you know, like fans project really came into their own with the cliff jumper set in 2006. And then of course, city commander in 2007 2008 but like there was like upgrade kits and all kinds of crazy stuff as early as like 2001 2002 um there was like lightsaber kits and all kinds of crazy stuff I probably should have brought the book down and more again i could show you but all like the really really early stuff of third party uh horned owl at a retro video game show i saw someone selling knockoffs of your family well see here's the thing that mold ended up getting that mold ended up getting stolen by uh what is it called Dairycon and now they're doing the their exclusive as if it's they took my exclusive and they're selling it as their exclusive and they're acting and what's funny is people were calling them out about it and saying like hey you stole proto man's idea and they're just deleting the comments so whatever you know the problem, look, the same problem that Hasbro has, people bootlegging and stealing your stuff, it's going to happen here too, you know? It's only a matter of time before people started stealing this idea and the other one. Whatever, you know what I mean? I don't really make these for profit. I make them just for fun. It's a, it's an excuse for me to have a little bit of writing, you know, make a little copy and a little figure with a little story. You know, it's an excuse for Damon and Josh to, to do some more art fun and do some fun stuff with that. And it's an excuse for people to have something at the con and for me to give away through the patrons and everything. Like afterwards, whatever happens, it sucks that people steal the ideas and it shows how, you know, creatively bankrupt they are. But it is what it is. I just don't, I don't like the fact that people were calling them out and then they were deleting all the comments. So they know that they did it and they don't care. So I always wanted to go to Dairy Con for years, and that kind of put a sour taste in my mouth. So F those guys. <laughs> that sucks. All it takes is a bad experience and some stupidity. And you know them. They're going to be doing it to make money. So what? whatever. Don't matter to me. Uh, I have a yellow bootleg of the Famicom Prime. I got several years back. I have no idea where it came from. Well, there you go. It's the, the, the sculpt itself was kicking around for years. And the factory that I got to do mine with had the sculpt. And then they printed them up and they did them in a higher quality PVC. I wish I had it. They're all over there. But very cool stuff. Um... Where are we at here? I do have a kit from way back when they gave God Ginrai a more accurate look. Oh, yeah. Like, there's there's tons and tons and tons of resin kits from Wonder Festival. Tons of them. And those date back as, like, late 90s, early 2000s. I mean, 
the um, the only Ichon figure that ever exists up to this point came out in 2001. I have it. I actually, I think I posted on my Instagram once. Uh, and that was, again, that was a third party item. That was a one day license through Hasbro, uh, through Takara, excuse me. All of that stuff, years and years. It's just when Fans Project came around, they brought it on a mass level. And the Western market finally got to really uh, experience third party that Asia has been experiencing for years. And that's where it really blew up, especially especially with, with Fans Project. Fans Project for the longest time was kind of like the gold standard. Well, you had like smaller companies here and there, more garage companies, if you will. Um, Plico, Plico, Bacon ha uh, kind of has the same sketch going on. Uh, are you talking about the new Bacon? I am unfamiliar with what's, what's going on with the new Bacon. I do talk to the people at the new Bacon all the time because some of them who are part of it are friends, but I don't really pay attention much to what's going on there unless I'm going to one. Then I'll be like, okay, what's happening here? But the uh, the Dairy Con one, unfortunately, was brought to my attention. And that was quite the shame to see that. Um, you know, it's one thing, uh, you know, it's one thing to like, Think up ideas. None of the steal people's ideas, man. Uh, sketchiness. Oh, what sketchiness is going on with Bacon? I didn't hear there was any sketchiness going on. Aren't they doing exclusives with... Uh, what's that company that does the, the, the squares? I forget what it's called. 52 Toys? Something like that. You want to know Proto Man's weakness? It's third-party Transformers. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you. I'll tell you the entire history of any Transformer toy. You start asking me about third-party, now I'm lost. <laughs> you know, name every third-party Transformer that turns into a Megatron gun. Uh, Hexatron. That was like the only one that everyone was talking about for the longest time. You know, I could name every Megatron gun toy that was officially released, but 52 toys. There you go. That's what it was. That's what it was. I, they look cool, the 52 toy stuff. But again, it's like, meh, I'm just not a, I'm just not a, uh, it's not a third party guy. It has to be something really unique to me. You know, like again, like the 86, uh, when they did the, um, there was one year that they did that, uh, the Batman, the Batman, I think it was the retool of the third party rat bat and they turned it into Batman's like Batwing. That was a cool one. That one I picked up, the Super Mario and Luigi animated two-pack from the Huffer and Pipes animated sculpts. That was a cool one. Uh, they did the prototype colored RC from the catalog. That was a cool one. There's not much else, you know, like obviously the odd, the odd hot rod figure here and there. Some of them I skip, some of them I get. Like uh, DX9 I had to get because that's the uh, Obari-san. Rodimus, can't miss that one. Uh, Tom Fleury at DairyCon made proto lactose intolerant. <laughs> shame on them. That's no, just it's a shame that that they did that. You know, such a shame. Such a shame. But it is what it is. That's that's the the road they want to walk. That don't be surprised that the mud you step in, or something else that looks like mud. Uh, it's pronounced five, two toys. Oh, okay. I see a five. I see a two. They're next to each other. 52. Uh, Placo Placo Studio One Seed. Oh, that one's cool too. That one's cool also, the, the, uh, the Primus. But again, it's like, uh, you know, it's cool, but is it like, is it worth it to like drop that kind of money and if Hasbro makes something that's just as cool? You know, I, I really like the original, you know? doesn't really fill a void that I didn't already have. The, but the Mastermind Creations Batman one was awesome. That's something that does not exist. And thus, that's why that was appealing to me. They did the... Um, I worked on the bio for that one. The uh, It was the Shattered Glass Drift, but done in the Deadpool colors. That one was really cool, too. That one was really fun to work on. Um, and again, because I don't know if they'll revisit that again. You know, so when they fill a void that really is like, you know, something that I feel Hasbro might not do, then I appreciate it. Then that's cool. Like whenever they do like Nintendo stuff or video game stuff or comic book stuff that like they don't really want to go that route. That always appeals to me. Always, always, always. 
And again, weird cars, 86 Corollas. Who's doing an 86 Corolla? No one's doing an 86 Corolla, you know? Me, when it comes to third party, and I've said this for years, is there's so many talented people working in third party that I would love it if they went outside of Transformers and kind of like filled the gaps in other toy lines. I mean, you see it once in a while, like you'll see like third party guys doing like, you know, third party Dragon Ball SH figure arts characters and stuff like that. And that's cool. But I mean, like, I would love it if like, you know, they tackled some 80s toy lines that like got discontinued and made third party versions of those characters that never got released. Like it's something like like uh, cops fighting crime in a future time. They never did any of the female characters as toys. That would have been like to have mainframe. It's a female character. Mainframe, um, Nightshade, uh, Mirage. Again, these are all Transformer trademarks, but Hasbro toy line. Um, you know, they never made figures of them in that six-inch O-ring scale. That would have been so cool. Uh, you know, Bucky O'Hare, a lot of those characters had prototypes made. The toys were never released. So if a third-party company could do that. And obviously, you know, there was a... I forget which company it was that did continue the Bucky O'Hare toys, but you know, they kind of in the end got it done. But I always feel that there's there's always a market. There's always a market. Uh T Formers 2002 MMC Nitro Convoy IDW Hot Rod before we got the official Velocitron one. Oh, totally. Totally. I loved that Nitro Convoy. I have it right there in my display because I was like, man, and I again I bought that one. Because at the time, in my brain, I'm like, I have the original Nitro Convoy, and then I have the little Kabaya PVC figure, and that's it for Nitro Convoy, outside of obviously a Hasbro variant and, you know, and like black repaints. But so I was like, when they did that third party one from IDW Rodimus, that was a day one purchase. And then I got a second one from PIA because he did, he bought it just to review it, and then he sold it which he does a lot, oddly enough. I, and hey, it works out for me. He wants to just buy things to review them and then sell them. That's cool. I'm willing to pick up after him. So, and then I bought his to get a second one. So I was, that was really hyped, that one. And it came with a comic book too. So that was cool. Really dug that. Yeah, there's a huge Hot Toys third-party market. Yeah, like it, that's why. Like, And it's to me, it's like some of those talents would be cool if they could go elsewhere and uh, and do some other crazy stuff. That third party mask, that thing was awesome. I heard that got taken down. Yeah, the cease and desist happened on that, which is a shame because I would have loved to get my hands on that. Uh, Mastermind Creations Hot Rod. The only reason why I have those ones was because two of the three were th were uh, TFCon exclusives, and I wrote the bios for two of the three. So I got those, and I, I never got the vanilla one. I have the two TFCon ones, the Shattered Glass colors and the, the, um, the Lost Light colors but I never got the vanilla version just because I didn't work on it. They didn't give me one. So money's going to go elsewhere. <laughs> got it. Can't spend on it all. Um, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of good stuff, though. I Again, I appreciate third party for the creativity, for the hustle and stuff. But the selfish side of me just goes, do do the weird shit. You know, do the weird stuff because I get it. The money's in the main characters and in the, in the named characters. Totally. I get that. But it, part of me is like, ah, I don't need to buy like a a masterpiece RC when there's going to be one down the line. You know, like especially especially when they do a masterpiece scales of a character that, you know, is going to happen one day. Like if they do masterpiece hardhead. OK, I get it. Probably not going to get a masterpiece hardhead headmaster in a long time. But like RC, Blur, Cup. You know, wheelie. Those will happen one day. Those will definitely happen one day. Uh, Billy B says fan project protector Rodimus add-on kit from yeah. I, see that one. That one I got years ago. That one I had. I think I had three of them. I think I have four of them actually. Gosh, why do I have four of them? I'm I'm a sick man. <laughs> but I remember I bought those, and then years later, fans project made like upgrade kits with them that came with. Chrome wings and a and a a target master like a third party firebolt. So like, man, I probably should bring those to a parts party. I don't need four of them, <laughs> but you know, you know, I'm crazy. Back then, I was way more irresponsible with my money. 
2008, I just got my first mechanic job, but I was still living with my parents. So I was getting these big paychecks, but living with my parents. So that means like I got a big paycheck and I didn't have rent or anything. So I was just, I was just being irresponsible. And now, now, now more than 15 years later, gosh, almost going on 20 years soon. Uh, I'm a much more educated individual when it comes to money, finance and everything, but 15 to 20 years will do that to you. Uh, third party companies need to do their own thing. Well, they, they need to do what makes them money. That's why I understand the directions they make. Um, I know there's obviously the legality of it too, which is not good, you know, and that, that makes it also difficult, but it's something where I, I understand their perspectives, you know, they're going to do what makes them money. And, you know, because they're doing it from the factory, they're able to, you know, they're able to make bigger profit. Like when Hasbro, to give an example, when Hasbro does a transformer product, it's not Hasbro's factory. They commission a plastics company to injection mold and make their toys. And they're all paid to do that. And then Hasbro gets that inventory, but they paid for that inventory. And then they then sell that to a distributor, which makes the profit and everything like that. Third party companies, sometimes they're made literally by the same people that work in those factories. So their profit margins are way huger. And sometimes they ask way more than what you normally would charge for, like, let's say, a deluxe class transformer. So they make very good money. And for them to make very good money, it also is better to hedge their bets if they make it characters that are desirable, as opposed to Proto Man going, where's my... Triggerbot Black, uh, Backstreet, you know, where's my, uh, you know, um, Santon, the rhinoceros from Beast War, from uh, Transformers Galaxy Force, you know, like, where's my updates of those guys? Pro Man has the deadly hot rod Ebola disease. Oh, God. There was one time when if a hot rod figure came out, I got a minimum of three of every one. MP09 hot rod. I owned three of three of it. And when you think about how much that thing cost back in the day and have three empty trailers, I sold one ultimately. And now I just have two, but still, man, crazy man. Uh, T Formers 2002, third party MP gave people quite a few options on aesthetics, whether it be cartoon accurate, toy accurate, or their own designs. Yeah. And they, they, again, once in a while, they do something that's different from the norm. And I appreciate it. Again, all of those third party masterpiece. RCs. They did one that was a TFCon exclusive that was done in the G1 prototype colors, which was like the the like the pinks, but with the salmons and everything, like the Fleuro Deary colors as they originally were. And I bought that one only because I wanted, and literally I have it in my display, posed exactly like the prototype was, because I thought that was kind of cute. And the box art was an homage to, to uh, Ghost in the Shell. And I'm a big Masamune Shiro fan, so you add that factor to it. So nice box, cool, cool idea. You know, sometimes I'll buy a toy just because the box is cool or it has a cool homage on the box. So that's how they get me. That's how they get me. Um, the U.S. one. Well, the U.S. one, unfortunately, has a lot of QC issues. Uh, the shoulders could break. There's a whole bunch of problems with the U.S. one. If you're going to buy a uh, Masterpiece Rodimus, you get the MP09 Japanese one with the trailer, unfortunately. And there, even that one they updated because there was like a first run and then a second run because the spoiler was getting scratched with the trailer mode. It's, it's a tough one. It was a tough one. Broke the spoiler on the other one? Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. I, if I broke the spoiler on it, I'd be... Sad as hell. <laughs> Break the spoiler. The only time I've ever seen a broken spoiler on Hot Rod was the original toy. Uh, Pleco, Pleco. Yeah, the US one was bad. The US one was terrible. Every like I, I transformed mine into robot mode for the Rodimus, held the Matrix, and then I have the vehicle mode on display because, again, I bought three of them, and then I have a, I have a sealed one. And, uh, and then I think it was Plow King, which was this customizer in the fandom. And he was doing like customizings of, of it. And he says, every time I paint one, the paint, for some reason, he's never had this problem before. He's like, it's like the paint like eats up the plastic and the figure will be on display. And then the arms just break off because it just can't even handle its own weight. It's like it would, it would 
break down. It was terrible plastic that was used. Um, yeah, see, and then then T Formers two thousand two MP09 Black Rodimus MP09B uh, has the knees of nightmare, which is like blue plastic syndrome. I have it too. The knees broke in the packaging. I bought it. The knees were broken in the packaging. And then I bought third-party die-cast knee replacements. No joke. That's some, like, you know, war veteran stuff. Um, and it has, I only have one version of it. And all the blue plastic on it is ridiculously fragile. And I think what happened was, is because that one was made after the American one. And I think that some of the mistakes that existed from the American version, mold-wise, got transferred over into the MP09B. I don't know what happened, but it's even worse. So if you see an MP09B, the black repaint, do not buy it unless you're willing to deal with a broken toy because I don't know if those knee replacements are widely available anymore. Maybe someone could do a a 3D printed one, but I don't know how stable those would be. So pretty rough, unfortunately. I'm looking at all of them right now. I wish I could kind of show you guys that. Eh. I'm going to screw up the camera, but there's the masterpiece display. Some of it, but I'm going to screw up the camera now. So that's why I, that's why I don't like touching the camera because I get a perfect shot, and then the shot is screwed. There we go. But yeah. Oh my God, we only have uh, 25 minutes left. We've been flying today. Jeez, jeez. I thought my can I thought my clock was wrong there. Goodness. Uh, what was I gonna what was I gonna say too? But yeah, I don't know what I said. all the other stuff I got upstairs. I didn't bring down because I, I didn't know if you guys would be interested. Again, it was like I picked up some Marvel Legend stuff. Um, what else did I get this week? Because there just wasn't much. There was there were sales on Lego stuff, which because my wife she likes Lego, so she picked up like some Lego stuff. She picked up some Animal Crossing Lego and some Marvel Lego. She got the Venom. She likes the poly bags, you know, the cheap $5 poly bags. So she always picked those up. So those were on sale at, at uh, Toys R Us Canada. So she picked up the Venom and uh, an Animal Crossing one. Uh, she picked up the Playmobil Naruto collection stuff. So she picked up those on sale. Uh, what else did we get? Not much. There wasn't much Transformer stuff on sale, unfortunately. All the stuff that was on sale was I posted on the Patreon last week. So uh, your clock is wrong. <laughs> no, it's right. Unfortunately, I know. So I, we're, we made uh, quite a big, uh, quite a big dinner tonight. So I want to, uh, I want to go enjoy it afterwards. I don't want to go to bed too late tonight. And then tomorrow, I have to, uh, tomorrow I have to do some more toy sorting. Uh, Beyblades, oddly enough, got to do some Beyblade toy sorting, and that's uh, that always takes a ton of time because when you have a Beyblade, but if you have all three pieces separate, and you have to make sure which goes with which, so you can make sure you sell it because it's complete. And that's a burst one, but I'm dealing with Metal Saga here. Um, it's all the buying and selling, all the buying and selling. Uh, here it comes. What's for dinner, Proto? Well, Proto Man planned this in advance for you guys. So my lovely wife made some Japanese curry. Uh, I took a photo of her while she was making it earlier today. Uh, that's in the raw stage, obviously. So you got potatoes, you got carrots, you got onions, you got uh, little beef cubes that you have to saute in uh, the onions because you saute the onions, make them all nice, and then you put the beef cubes in there, you cook those thoroughly. And then that's the brand that we use where we use golden curry, which you could buy at any Asian supermarket. It's a Japanese curry mix. Uh, you use two cubes of that with... with uh, with hot water, mix it all up, let it sit for like a good hour so that it evaporates properly. And then no joke, that's a huge pot, by the way, in that shot there on the left. That will feed us, no joke, for like four days straight. No joke. And what you do is you make fresh rice every day. And you do, you just have, you get a nice rice cooker, make fresh rice every day, put a, a scoop of that on top of the rice, and you're in heaven. You are in absolute heaven. And yes, we always cook fresh. We don't eat garbage. <laughs> we don't do not eat garbage in this household. Uh, we will spoil ourselves once in a while. We'll get like a Costco pizza, you know, or or like I'll you know, 
I, I'll always have fans that bring me the the legendary Payday chocolate bar, which is my favorite chocolate bar, and it is not available in Canada. Actually, you could buy it in Canada, but you have to go to a, a, a junk food specialty store, and it's probably like seven dollars a bar. Yeah, Japanese curry is the best. I don't like. I, no offense to like you know Indian curry and stuff, but Japanese curry. If you have that with some just some plain white rice, it is just some next level stuff. You eat that, no joke, and you don't have to eat for the rest of the day. You are so full, and it's great. Carrots, beta carotene, you know, sure, potatoes, yeah, a little bit of carbs, it won't kill you. Onions, they're great, gives you some vitamin D, some vitamin A, and then you get some red meat. You know, if you if you modulate it, you don't have a lot of red meat throughout your 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 uh, your month. You're good. So, but you get some good protein some good fatty acids and everything. And then the curry is just aces. You know what I mean? Oh, so good. That guy's making me hungry just talking about it, let alone looking at it. But you literally go to any Asian supermarket, Golden Curry. That brand is very widely available across all of North America. It's probably the most popular brand for making Japanese curry. It's that good. And we use it all the time. Has your wife ever put together one of the Lego kits that have super tiny bricks? Yes, she has. She even bought like those off-brand ones. Uh, Nano Bricks, I believe was the company. Um, she loves those. She loves all of those. She loves big crazy sets. She loves small sets. She's obviously a big minifig person. I would love... Do we have photos of her collection? Don't know if I do. One moment. I don't think I do. She has a beautiful collection, though. Huge, huge, huge collection. No, I don't have any. I, here, I have photos of the Beyblades. There's the Beyblade collection, Metal Saga. <laughs> That's an old photo, though. Um, damn, I don't have uh, any photos. But yeah, she has a crazy Lego collection. Like three D-tops just filled. Filled, filled, filled with Lego. Filled, filled, filled. She's like eyeing that, that brand new Batman animated series wall hang one but it's way too expensive. <laughs> We're like, no, thank you. Um, but yeah, you know, that's, that's the secret guys. Make sure you make sure you have someone that uh, understands your hobby and understands the madness. Cause uh, my warning that I always give to guys is, you know, if you have a girl and you buy a $20 transformer and she's rolling her eyes, you are effed. Because if tw she's rolling her eyes at $20, you are just effed beyond belief. Because you know $20. Man, what could $20 even get you with Transformers today? And that was always like, that was always like my warning to guys. Because sometimes, you know, my God, they, they end up like, I have friends that they got a girlfriend and they sold their collection. And it's just like, oh my God, what are you doing? You know? What are you doing? You know, this, this, this thing brought you joy, you know, and then they break up with the girlfriend and now they sold their entire collection. Swish. Good job. Um, always find someone that loves what you love. That way it, it works out better. And I'll tell you something, toy collecting is not a terrible hobby to have. And what I love about toy collecting, as opposed to a lot of other hobbies, if ever you need to cash out and you do genuinely want to get out of it, it's an investment. So much of this stuff, at least you can either get your money back or you make a profit, you know? Yes, it takes space. I get it. it takes space. It can be considered childish to the ignorant, but otherwise it is a great hobby to have. A great hobby to have. Um, That kills me every time I hear that. Plico Plico says, yeah, dude. Dude, I don't want to say my friend's name here in Montreal. Larry probably knows who I'm talking about. But he just called me up one day and he's like, I'm dating a girl. You know, she she's not into the toy thing, so I'm selling everything. And I'm just like, bro, what are you doing? And then he sold all his Hulk stuff and all his He-Man stuff, which at the time was Maddie Collectibles. Uh, and it's just, dude, what the hell, man? Um, T-Formers 2002. You can't even get two core classes for 20. Exactly. Exactly. And the reason why I give that example, because I was dating a chick in 2002, 2001, and I picked up, no joke, like it, 
funny thing, it might actually was was this guy and and mock alert. Um, I picked these up from Zellers back in the day. It was probably 2001, and she rolled her eyes, and I was just like, "Oh boy, she's gonna be in trouble." Yeah, and let's just say she didn't last very long. Um, I'm not interested in having people that are gonna bring those negative vibes to something that brings me joy. Uh, Ashnood, that's why my wife is also a toy collector. You know what? You, and you don't need to have a toy collector. That's cool too. But you need to have someone that respects and understands it. That's the thing. They got. They need to at least respect and understand it. Like she's not a Transformer collector. She doesn't, you know, like she likes robot stuff, but, you know, she's more into like Evangelion and Gundam and stuff like that. She's more in that. She's more of an anime like robot collector of anything. She likes she loves her anime and stuff like that. Like the manga room, as we call it, the other room, that's more her stuff. And that's where the Lego is. Um, it just so happens to have my Ninja Turtle collection in there, too. But. But the point is, is, you know, they have to respect and understand it, at least, because it's a crazy hobby and it's only going to get crazier. And when you have stuff like HasLab items and masterpieces and third party and big conventions and new pre-orders happening every week, you have to have someone that understands it, you know, you know, that that understands how the game is, you know, and, and just make sure you're to be also to be a good boyfriend to also be an individual that isn't stupid with your finances, because then you're also not being fair to them. You know, you have to be smart. With, you can't just buy everything, you know, you have to be smart with that too. So it's, it's, it's a balance, you know, it's a balance. If, if like, uh, I'm trying to think, uh, see, I don't have to pay for HasLab, so I don't have to think about that one. But if like, let's say, you know, a HasLab item comes up, right. But, you know, you have to like, let them know, Hey, you know, it's 350 bucks. It's going to be a hit, you know, like, yeah, those are conversations you have to have, and they you have to have an understanding with those. The, the, it sucks when, you know, there's, again, another local guy here in Montreal. Um, you know, he has to always think up ways of lying to his girlfriend that he lives with of uh, when he buys stuff. Because he would come to a con, and he would buy stuff, and then it's like, he, he'll be like, yeah, I put it in the trunk of my car, and then I leave it in the trunk of my car until she's not home, and then I bring it into the house. And I'm like, wow. Like the, the fact you have to live that life, that's, that's like, that's remarkable. You know, that's remarkable. Or what, what was it? Forget which online toy store was it? I don't know. I think it was big bad. They said like for an extra $5, we'll put a note in the box saying congratulations on winning this item. So that way, when the package comes in the mail, you could tell your wife that you want it for free or something instead of, instead of paying for, I don't know. The fact that you have to go through all those hoops and everything to lie is always, you shouldn't have to be in that situation. Uh, Patrick Brown, so my wife is not a collector, but she fully embraces my hobby as things that which bring you joy. Exactly. She call, uh, She calls from shopping, asking me if I'm looking for specific figures. Exactly. It's something where you have to have that understanding. You have to have that understanding and the worst thing ever is if you have a passion about this and then you bring someone into your life that is totally against it. It's it's not genuine. You know, this hobby is who you are. And if you remove this hobby from that and it was just like they asked something to change about you that isn't related to the hobby, it's still changing who you are. And I don't think it's a negative thing. Transformers has brought me a lot of positives in my life, tons of positives in my life. And if you're if you're a responsible adult, you won't have any issues. You know, the negatives that come from being a toy collector don't really stem from being a toy collector. It comes from being a negative, uh, uh, irresponsible adult when it comes to your finances and money. Uh, Plico, Plico, don't you have a comp uh, don't you have to completely give up what you love for someone else? That's just mad. Well, that's just again. Then they don't love you. You know what I mean? That's they're just. They're just terrible people. Snell's World with the five dollars super chat. Thank you for the super chat. Snell's World, uh, my enjoy my enjoys me enjoying my collection has been has been known to buy me Titans. I'm going to assume you're going to say my wife enjoys my collecting or my girlfriend. <laughs> Maybe there's a typo there. Uh, Snell's World, um, but yeah, look, you have to have someone that's in your corner with that stuff. I always use the term, you need a Batman to your Robin. You need to have someone that's your sidekick in this stuff. They might not be on the same level of interest as you, 
but at least they understand, at least they try to, you know, to be a, to, to, to accept it. it. It's something where, you know, when you bring them to a convention, they have to understand that there is going to be points where you're going to be ignoring them because you're in the zone, you know? So you got, it's, it's a, it's a whole thing. I, I literally like to give like marriage and dating counseling when it comes to this hobby, because some people make really bad decisions and then they're very unhappy in their lives later. Uh, it doesn't have to be a bad thing. I know it can be excessive as time. This is Plico Plico, but that's all part of the learning process. Well, of course, I mean, look, like I said, like I said, when I got my first job and living on my own, granted, I, I've always had a girlfriend at some point in my life. That's just the craziness of that. Um, <laughs> I, there was, was a time where I wasn't balding proto man. I was actually quite the good looking individual. Go look at old photos and old videos um, where women wasn't an issue for me, but finding a woman that was accepting of the hobby because they would see the guy who was into racing and sports and everything. And they didn't know that this was going on back home. <laughs> it was a whole other story. Uh, Alden Tolber with the $2 super chat. Imagine if Hasbro made an Insecticons queen. Well, that would be, um, that would be the ladybug one, which never happened from the deluxe Insecticons. That would have been cool. I still think she'll happen one day. One day we'll get the deluxe Insecticons and we'll get their fifth member, which was the ladybug. I actually posted that on my Twitter a while back. Uh, I posted all her her uh, prototype images and everything that never came to be. Um, so it would be a ladybug, the Insecticon Queen. She'd have to be. She'd have to be. Uh, Iacon Queen, welcome to the Minicon Recruits. Iacon Queen, thank you for being a member. Ask away any questions you wish now that you are a green name. Um, Batman or comments, even I'll read them out loud. Uh, DW Brown, Batman to my Robin, a billionaire help pay for it all, especially with inflation. What I mean is they got each other's backs, you know, that's, that's kind of what it is, is you gotta, you gotta have each other's backs with this kind of stuff. She's going to have a hobby too. She's going to have an interest and you got to have her back. You know, she likes Lego. So I help her with her Lego stuff, you know? A lot of a lot of times when we're at conventions and they're selling a bunch of Lego, she'll ask me, she's like, what do we have again? Like, sometimes I have to be responsible for remembering what's in our collection. You know, um, Insecta Queen, uh, James, Hobbit, would it be a bombshell repaint? That would probably be the best way to go about it. Get rid of the horn. Put the two little antennas. Yeah. Beat Papple. There you go. Nausicaa knows what I'm talking about. Beat Papple. That would be awesome. If they could do that, oh my God. Long overdue. 30 years in the making. That was supposed to come out in 1984, that figure, and it never came out. 30 years, excuse me, 40 years in the making. Oh gosh, math today. 40 years in the making. Not all ladybugs are female, that is true, but this one was. This one was it, was, it was the female character and the other ones were male characters from the, uh, the line. If you ever saw yeah, Bugs Life, Bugs Life, it was a dude. I think there was a, there was a female ladybug in Santo Baguito. Anyone remember that old Nickelodeon cartoon? I think there was a female ladybug in Santo Baguito. It was these two ants that owned like a, like a, di not a diner, like a restaurant. Anyone remember Santo Baguito or am I aging myself again? <laughs> so, uh, DW Brown, I'd have her back. I'd support her. Yahweh Mega Collection. Uh, she doesn't mind my collection of Obari Angel Blade. Well, uh, I have, I mean, the only sexy girl figures I have are just Transformer related ones. So she gets that, you know, she gets that. I would like to have some Obari figures if they if they made like Obari styled uh Obari styled um Fatal Fury figures, I'd pick those up. Because I love the way he drew those characters. The Terry Bogard, the Mai, the Kim Kaplan. Those would be cool. Angel Blade though is pretty, pretty risque though. There's an anus in that one, if I remember correctly, when she does her transformation. 
or was that uh, Keiko Common? One or the other. Yeah, it was my wife. There, I, Snell World, I, knew, I figured out what you were talking about. My wife. There you go. Uh, you have Rosanna from TFCon. Unfortunately not. I did not pick that one up. I own the original. I own the original. Um, but I do not own uh, the TFCon LA one. Uh, Iacon Queen. I once got back into collecting. Uh, my spouse also started collecting. The only difference is she repaints all of her figures. <gasps> Second page. Oh, but she's, maybe she's a good customizer. That's always important too. There's a lot of um, at TFCon. Some of like like man, some of the greatest Transformer customizers came out of like TFCon Toronto. Like the winner of Bacon's customizing competition in 2008 was for, was Dak from TFCon, uh, Plow King, Transformers. I know him. Uh, Malwave, uh, the uh, uh, General Techno. Some of the greatest customizers come out of TFCon, and those guys, man, like they TFCon, like Transformer customizers. Like they buy like three of figures because they know that it, down in the future they might need Unicron hands as they used to call them. Like you would want to get Unicrons, Junker Unicron, just so you could get the hands because they were articulated hands at the time. Like there's so many great customizers out of there. So I could understand buying figures just to repaint them, you know? Um, but yeah. Oh, where are we at? Where are we at? Where are we at? I don't want to miss any questions. Meet you all the way. Da -na -na -na. Rosanna, yeah. Uh, T Formers 2000, that Rosanna and Trans Tech Cheetor pack was fantastic. Well, the Trans Tech Cheetor was, again, something that doesn't exist. So, uh, very important that people pick that one up. Uh, General Techno's Cosmos Custom went for over 1K Canadian. Yep. That went for. Insane money. And he's planning something else for the next uh, charity auction. So stay tuned for that. That's going to be another big one for uh, TFCon Toronto. I won't spoil that. I'll leave that to General Techno to reveal. Um, but yeah, man, oh man, like that was good. And, and again, when you think about it, that 1K pretty much made up almost, I would have to say, 9% of the donation to the sick kids foundation and make a wish. So that was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. And the person who bought it props to them, man, <laughs> props to them to own the ultimate, uh, Titan class in cosmos. But you know what? The way, the way that Cosmos's prices were going at one point with uh speedy 500, I wouldn't be surprised. I think the most I saw someone spend for the deluxe class cosmos was $300. So it's not there, but still, Ugh, just wait. Uh, comedy 9.0 with the $2 super chat. When do you think we'll get a new Thunderwing figure? Um, last Thunderwing trademark was... Ooh. Give me a moment, brother. Give me a moment. I have to, like, look at the stuff. Last Thunderwing trademark. Shit. What was the last one? Because I, I, I see the later toys, but I'm like, when did it refresh and expire? I have to check. I'd have to check in the, the archives for Hasbro with the, the U.S. trademark patent office. But I'm telling you, bro, I think we're due for one for sure. If The fact that I have to look this carefully at the wall, we're probably due. But let's hope they don't do something. I don't want to say lazy. But like, man, I must be forgetting something. Mm. Last Thunderwing. Damn. I don't know. That's a tough one. I have to. I'm gonna have to go into that because there's there was some where they also because they I know that through fun publication. I remember I wrote the Thunderwing bio for their combiner um with the thunderwing head on it so that kept the trademark alive for at least another four years and then they did thunderwing through i believe a tiny titan 
which again, for another four, I'd have to look into it. But definitely we're due. We're due. Definitely within the next two years, you're going to see a Thunderwing of something. Let's just hope it's not Minicon Thunderwing from Cybertron. Let's not hope it's, uh, you know, like they could throw a Thunderwing on something else because it's such a generic name in some cases. And that's a good one, though. That's a good question, though. That's a good question, comedy. Um, damn. But we are due. We are due for sure. There's got to be something. I'm even looking at the Bacon stuff because I'm like, we did the 5.0. That had the trademark with Jesse. Jesse and me wrote that stuff. Damn, there's nothing else. Because they didn't do, because I always look at the, the like, oh, did they do a bot shot? No, they didn't. Did they do, did they do a Creo? No, they didn't. You know, like uh, Tiny Titans, there's something there. Nothing with Tiny Turbo Changers. Because they'll do that. Some, sometimes they'll be like, oh, man, we have, we have an Ultra Magnus that's going to expire, but we don't want to do an Ultra Magnus in the next four years. Put it on a Tiny Turbo Changer. That's what they did with Unicron. That's like they they're like we're not doing a Unicron in the next four years, and they made a tiny turbo, uh, tiny Titan Unicron figure, non-transforming little PVC that bought them four years. You know, man. Yeah, it's true. Hey, eh? imagine if they make it out of the Metal Hawk or the Cyclonus. The, that's that's the only that's the problem is that sometimes they just have to phone something in. That was bludgeon for years. Bludgeon for years and years. It was like we have to do a bludgeon toy. Ah, repaint a G2 Hero Megatron. Okay, cool. We have to do a bludgeon toy. Ah, repaint a a, a Minicon. Okay, cool. We have to do a bludgeon toy. Ah, repaint um what's this called the 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 movie 2007 toy Wreckage. Wreckage, the movie 2007 toy. Make Put that in a two-pack with a whirl, bludgeon. Like literally 15 years of just how do we keep bludgeon's trademark alive without having to spend money, you know, or lose the trademark. Thunder Wing, Thunder Blast, Thunder Clash. Oh, we're getting a Thunder Clash. That for sure. Thunder Clash is definitely happening. Thunder Blast would be cool too. Like AKA, you know, Chromia. That ridiculously expensive, oh, you can't see it because of the, the microphone, but that ridiculously expensive figure that shouldn't be expensive, but it is, unfortunately. Uh, time early. Oh, we are over the mark already. We're at the two-hour mark already. Man, oh, man. With her boat cape. Yeah. Same thing the Bacon one's cool, too, when it was uh, Alita 1. Uh, Proto, you missed the dinner announcement. No, I... Uh... I, uh, oh, uh, Mikey and Louie missed the dinner announcement. Oh, Mikey and Louie's here. Oh, okay. Here you are. So we'll, we'll answer one more super chat and we'll, we'll show the dinner again and then we'll, we'll do closing for today then. Uh, T Formers 2002 super chat question for $5. Thank you for all the super chats again, people. They always help the podcast a lot. The Siege of Cybertron five pack for Times Return had the, there you go. That the Thunderwing head. You're right. You're right. That's why I didn't see it because it's sitting on top of the, uh, it's sitting on top of that uh, that Power Master Optimus Prime that they had in that two pack. There you go. See, that's how they keep it alive. Quick, we got to do some. Put a little Headmaster in a box set. You know. There you go. Thank you, T Formers two thousand two. It's true. It's that stupid head. I'm looking at it now because because I have the Power Master Prime and there it is right there. There you go. There you go. And Snell, thank you for uh, T Formers 2002. Snell World five dollar super chat would be awesome if Haslab Autobot City a redo of Metroplex. Don't tell them that. Make it a retail item. Don't make stuff Haslab because then you guys are gonna have to pay through your butt for something that would have been a Titan class. Which would you prefer? Three hundred and fifty dollars a Haslab or two hundred dollars and it's a mass retail item that potentially could go on clearance and then you could get a good deal. You tell me. Haslab tax, be careful what you wish for. Be careful what you wish for. Mikey and Louie, Japanese curry. <laughs> uh, that's what we're having tonight. Beautiful, amazing, delicious. I love it. It's probably my, 
of everything my wife makes is probably my top three favorite meals that she makes. I love it. And it wasn't even her. She had another friend who, when I was at a, a convention, like they did like a cooking day together. She's an amazing cook, my wife. And and so they did like a cooking day together and it was her first time making Japanese curry and she loved it. She, all her Asian recipes, spoiler, she's Asian. All her Asian recipes, they're all amazing. And it's just, I'm with her just for the food. <laughs> the food's good. Her and her mother's food, both of them. Amazing, amazing stuff. Um, but yeah, Japanese curry. If you want to go make it, there's everything. Carrots, potatoes. Uh, you can't see the onions. They're being sauteed in the other pot. Uh, beef bourguignon, you could get that anywhere. You could get beef cubes for fondue. It's all the same, really. Just get get a lean cut. Don't get something with a lot of fat because then you have to drain all the fat and you do not want the fat in there. And then you get golden curry that you could buy anywhere. I believe even Walmart has golden curry. Go check your, uh, I guess we'll call it foreign food section in Walmart. They probably have golden curry too. Uh, there's different varieties, spicy, mild, regular. I get the mild to spicy. Asian food is awesome. Keeps me thin. That's for sure. <laughs> it keeps me thin and healthy, you know, and it's, uh, it's more of the basics. It's all the basics. It's not a lot of, you know, you, you just buy real food and you make it from fresh ingredients, you know, but it is what it is. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for all the love and support. Thank you for everything. Thank you for all the super chats I got today from Snell World, T Formers 2002. I know I'm missing others. They're all, but thank you for the super chats. They always make a big difference. Thank you for the gifted subs that we got today. Thank you for the new subs that also joined also. And everything, again, for all the love and support and everything we do here on the podcast. I hope you were entertained this evening. Uh, I apologize for anyone that didn't see the Wednesday. We did a Wednesday live stream, just super stream quickly. Uh, you didn't miss much. Just me in my living room, messing with some comic books, doing some sorting. But thank you all for the love and support. And we will be back again next week, as always. We'll be back again. And uh, we will talk more about the robots in the skies and all the awesomeness. Uh, there will be another reveal probably early this week. There is more images behind the scenes. You could probably figure out what it might be. Um, but we'll see what gets leaked out over this week. We will talk again in the near future, my friends. And as always, take care of yourself, your friends, your families, your loved ones. The world is not as negative a place as you think it is. It's just the negative people you put around you. Don't worry about politics and all this crazy stuff and you know everything that's distracting from the real things that matter in life which is the people around you. I'm out of here. Take care of yourselves. And as always, roll out.